Hey guys, um, so interesting video for today, at least in my opinion. Um, a lot of you might be familiar with this. Uh, there's a book, there's a movie uh, called The Secret, and it sounds very nonsensical to anyone that's not familiar with it, but some people will be able to appreciate it. Um, lots of people have experienced it. Um, it basically comes down to what you think about all the time you attract into your life. It sounds mystical. And it sounds uh, sounds like something that if someone started talking about it, you would just completely ignore what they had to say. Uh, however, I've found it to be true, and I've found it to be true since I first started hearing about it. Um, I was on Netflix like, I don't know, close to a decade ago. I saw a movie called The Secret and I watched it. And it was these people talking about what you think about all the time comes to you. And it was very interesting and I highly recommend you guys go and find it. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube as well. Um, and I started noticing that in my life, everything that I thought about all the time came to me. And the more specific I got about the things that I thought about all the time, the more specific the things were that came to me. So I started setting goals when I was very young that were quite specific. I want to be able to lift this. I want to be able to do this. I want to be like this. And to a T, those things started coming into my life. Um, now, it won't necessarily be as specific as you would like it to be. Like I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to be like the, the freakish power lifters that I was watching. I wanted to be like a 400 pound like mountain that, you know, could hardly walk and couldn't tie his shoes, but could lift whatever, 900 pounds. And that's essentially exactly what ended up happening. Um, but it happened in many other ways. Um, any, anything from, from women to money, uh, what I did with work. Um, when I was 20 years old, uh, I was making very little money and I thought my life was pretty great. I was very happy because I, you know, I come from a situation where I didn't expect much out of life. So even though I wasn't doing well, I thought I was doing quite well. But I told my girlfriend, I said, I'm going to work online. I'm going to make a bunch of money. Um, and I'm going to use that money to buy these houses that are around us that are like really cheap right now because this was like, you know, 10 years ago nearly. And the, the 2008 market crash had happened in Florida. Houses were very cheap. Houses, you know, you'd find a house for 30 grand, 25 grand, 40 grand. And I thought, you know, these places are renting for like 700 and 800 dollars. I'm going to buy some of these things. And then if I get three of them, then I would have over $2,000 a month. And, I'd be doing as well or better than I am now and I just won't have to work anymore and how great life could be. I could just eat food and focus on powerlifting and blah. And so I told my girlfriend, I'm gonna work online, I'm gonna make a bunch of money and I'm gonna buy these houses around us and when I'm 25, we're gonna move to a different country and we're not gonna have to work anymore. We're gonna get to travel the world and not gonna have to work anymore. And that was for, you know, someone with almost no education and almost no success in anything other than lifting heavy things in my garage. To be 20 and, and say, I, I want to retire abroad, I want to travel the world and retire at 25 based off this work that I haven't started doing yet and success in something that I haven't begun yet. Um, that's a very ambitious thing to say, but it didn't seem ambitious to me. It seemed like, well, sure. That's like, here's a, here's a path to doing the things that I want to do. So I started focusing on it all the time. And while I was making videos, that was my goal as well. The, the, the people I was making videos with, that's, that's all I talked to them about. All I talked to them about was, oh, you know, I got this house, I can rent it out. Oh, I'm buying this other house, I'm going to get this house, I can rent it out. And then I'm going to get this house, I'm going to buy it like this, and then I'm going to rent it out. And when I, then I'll have this much money. And the people that I, you know, were in my life at the time, they had some money as well, and or they were getting some money. And I told them, 
buy a house. You're getting, you're gonna have a hundred thousand dollars soon. Buy two houses for fifty grand each. Um, you'll make a thousand dollars a month after all your expenses with these places. I'll make this much money, and we can we can all move together. We're gonna move to South America, and we're never gonna have to work again. We're gonna start a farm. That was what I wanted at the time. I, want, I wanted to have a farm, a big piece of land in South America with a farm with with the people that were in my life and we would all have this passive income and I thought about that all the time it, it made me excited to wake up made me excited to work everything I did was with the intent of taking that money investing it properly and having this dream life that I had set out for myself now mind you what I didn't mention was when I was like 11 years old, I was having a terrible time in school. I was getting kicked out all the time. I wasn't going. I didn't see how I could succeed in school ever. It just didn't seem possible to go through another ridiculous amount of time in schooling to be able to work at McDonald's because that's what I was basically told. If you don't graduate high school, you can't work at McDonald's. So I'm thinking better graduate high school if you want to work at McDonald's. And that didn't seem conceivable. So when I was 11 or 12 years old, I decided I wanted to buy rental properties. Um, by the time I was 14, I decided I wanted to be super strong. So I started drawing out plans as to how many properties I would have to have to not have to work anymore. And I drew out a budget for myself as to how I would live if I had that much money. And it looked fantastic. And I put together a plan as to how I would make that much money. And at the time, as an 11 year old, um, all I did was smoke weed when I was 11, 11, 12, 13. It's all I did was smoke weed. And so I had this plan, this master plan. I'm going to, you know, I thought good weed was like $10 a gram. So I need to grow this many grams and I need to sell this many grams. And if I get this much money together, I can buy this many houses. And I had this hyper complex plan, like hyper complex plan down to like the pH level of the soil and the water and the type of weed I would grow and the grams per watt and the type of lights and how you would get rid of the smell and how you would hide the heat signature and how you would sell the sell the weed. At the time it was like my plan was you would grow for three years, you'd get together however many pounds you needed, I forget how much that was, but you wouldn't sell it while you were growing because that's how you get caught so you'd hide it. You'd hide it for like three years, you know, you bury it um, this was my ideas at the time. You'd, you'd bury it so no one could find it. You'd like plant trees on top. And then in the future, you'd close, close down the grow operation so you couldn't be caught. Which, by the way, you'd need like four houses to split the bill. Mind you, this is at 11. Like, this is a pretty complex plan at 11. You'd need like four houses so you wouldn't have too high of a bill at any one house so you wouldn't be caught. And then you'd grow all this, all this weed and then you'd... Um, You'd hide it and then you'd close down the grow operation so you wouldn't be caught growing. And then when you sold it, you'd go out to, uh, to the beach with people and you'd go up to the, your neck in water. And then you'd give them the coordinates of where this uh, stuff was buried. So you never handed it to them. You'd give them like the coordinates were like, there's going to be this pink rock and under that pink rock. And then they would get out of the water and they would drop like a bag in the trunk of your truck or something like that. And, you know, it's, it was so much more complex than that. <laughs> so I had this way of selling it and then you had the money and you had to make it legal. So I was going to have like a hot dog stand. I was like, I had this whole complicated plan of how I would make that money able to purchase things um, because you can't just have money show up out of thin air. And then I was going to buy like a few acres of land and I was going to buy Katrina homes because you can build a Katrina home for like, 30 grand or something. I was going to have four Katrina homes. I was going to live in one. I was going to rent out three. And I was going to use the rest of the land to have a farm that was going to have like a bass pond and all the things that I loved. And it was going to supplement my food. I had this hyper complex plan. And so I've always been that way. I've always been a very visual um, thinker. I've always put together extremely complex plans. Um, and I've been like, I would have to do this and I'd have to do that and I have to do that. And it's, and it hugely benefited me with training because that's what you do with training. You go, I want this. That's what I want. I want to look like this guy. I want to live like this person. This is what my life will be like. That's what I want. This is the thing. And you go, well, to do that, I'd have to do this, 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 this. It'll take this long. Blah. 
and then you stick to it and you stick to it and you stick to it and you stick to it. And eventually your life just kind of transforms into what you want it to be. So what I'm here to tell you is if you can figure out what you really want and you can figure out what you really want bad enough that you would take the steps necessary to do it, because that's the important part. You'd have to take the steps necessary to do it. You can basically have whatever you want. Now, of course, I didn't go on to grow weed and stuff. I grew out of that. Um, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea to do things that'll put you in jail. However, as an example, I was doing this. I was wanting rental properties since I was 11. And so I've been thinking about that all my life. And when I was 20, I solidified it into an actionable plan. And then I focused on it every day, all day, all the time for years. And within a few short years, I moved outside the country, didn't have to work anymore. Um, shortly after that, I got, you know, even more money and I bought even more places. And ever since then, I've spent some ungodly amount of time every day thinking about getting more places. So I went from having just a few to having many. And at the moment, I'm in the process of closing on 10 places. I've got an offer in on another 12. And I am will shortly afterwards be putting an offer in on a few more. And I'll reach more, more than I ever th even wanted a year ago or two years ago. And then it's only a matter of time before it's something absolutely astounding. Um, it's, it could be as many as I want them to be. It, it, I could have as many properties as I want. It's just a, a fact to me. It's just how many do I want to have? Because my life is exceptionally great on like $2,500 or $3,000. So how much money do you need? How much money do you want the stress for? Would you want to take care of 100 or 200 or 1,000 rental properties? If you can't spend the money, maybe not. Maybe you wouldn't want to do that. Maybe I wouldn't want to do that. I'm not really sure about that. Um, but I am sure that at the moment I'm, I'm trying to get to 50 properties. And then I'm going to see how I feel about that and keep putting money in the stocks and focus on other things in life that I think are likely more important, like physical health and you know happiness and travel, uh, relationships, stuff like that. And then we'll see if I want to take on more responsibility. I'm not totally sure about that, but I should get sure. I should get sure about what I want. Um, and that's what I spend most of my time doing is trying to figure out what I want. And even today, to this day, to, well, I woke up this morning, but yesterday, I'm still doing the same thing that I've always been doing. I'm thinking about what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? Where do I want to live? How do I want to live? Who do I want to be? How do I want to be? What habits do I want? How can I create those habits? And it's giving me all the things that I ever wanted. It's, it's giving me more than I ever thought I could have. And it really does that having this ridiculous life, in my idea of, of what a ridiculous life is, for me it's ridiculous and that's why I have it. If I thought it, you know, I should have something better, I'm sure by now I would have something better. But I can't think of a lot of things that I would like better. So that's my problem. That's my shortcoming. And I'm, and I'm sure that's something uh, similar to putting the emergency brake on like in my life is because if I had higher ambitions than I did, I would have succeeded higher. Like, for example, I didn't work online for the last five years. I didn't borrow money from the bank for the last five years, six years, seven years, my whole life. So if I would have done all those things, if I would have been more ambitious, I would be far more successful than I am now. But the question is, what would I do with it? What would I do with it that would justify the work, the time, the energy, the risk, the blah? Um, and it's, it's hard to say because again, I'm very happy with what I have now. So having much, much, much more, it's not that important to me. Um, if it was, I'm sure I'd be doing better. And so that's what I have to say to you guys. Aim quite high. Aim for what you really want. You have to really want it. You can't just say, you know, things that would be great. Like, oh, I want a 1,000 foot boat and to be a movie star and to have a thousand girlfriends. It has to be, you know, actionable and realistic in some sense. Although 
it's not unactionable to work towards having a thousand foot boat, but there's a really good chance you'd be happy with a hundred foot boat and three girlfriends <laughs> um, or something like that. Uh, so, you know, you have to take the time to figure out what those things are. And for me, I'm still doing that. Um, and my life is still getting better. Um, I lost 110 pounds over the last year. I keep buying more houses. I keep uh, improving myself as a human being. I, you know, quit drinking. I quit eating bad. I quit thinking bad. Um, every day I've taken on new habits that are extremely profoundly helpful to me. Reading, um, listening, goal setting, sort of like journaling, writing down my ideas. I, I write down stuff all the time. I, I write it in my computer. But uh, essentially the law of attraction is something I found out about around a decade ago and it changed my life. And I didn't realize that I'd been using it all my life. And when I found out what it was, I started using it with intent on purpose, using it as a tool. And it's only magnified the results of what I've been able to do 10, 20 fold. Um, because until you know that it's a real thing, until you know that it's something that you can act on, until you know it's a tool you can use to sculpt your life, you're not gonna be able to use it as effectively. Because once you know what it is, you can purposely do it. And then you can purposely achieve the results that you want in a much faster fashion than if you just said, well, that would be nice. Or something like that. Um, as always, guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Check out MuscleMasks.com for coaching and products and stuff like that.